Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. Back on beta I said that I would do a quick mount guide to sum everything up in 8.0 and how you get them. Well, here we are. This is all the new mounts that you can get in patch 8.0 of Battle for Azeroth and their acquisition methods. We're going to kick it off with allied races. So of course the Dark Irons and the Maghar both have mounts with the Dark Iron Core Hound and the Maghar Direwolf. Now unlocking allied races is kind of simple but time consuming. Your primary bottleneck is of course your reputation with either the 7th Legion or the Honorbound Faction. Now this reputation is primarily from doing world quest content after you are leveling and of course doing the war campaign which you need to finish to unlock allied races. Now, look, if you do want to uh, do these fast, then throw a contract on for either one of those factions and just do world quests. You will also, of course, want to pay attention to the war table. It will keep you supplied with a near constant amount of just faction reputation quests for the BFA factions, which will be great if you're a mount collector because, well, quite a few um, of the mounts come from faction vendors. Speaking of which, let's talk about the rep mounts. So, the six zone reps at Exalted each offer a mount. For Alliance, you've got the Order of Embers, Proudmoore Admiralty, and Storm's Wake, and they give you a black, gray, and white horse. Uh, you could call them the Smoky Charger, Admiralty Stallion, and Dapple Gray if you wanted, but they're just a black, white, and gray horse. So um, over on the Horde side, you um, can get the Expedition Blood Swarmer from Talanji's Expedition, the Hyena from the Voldunai, and the Cobalt Pterodax from the Zandalari Empire. They're not that expensive. They will just, of course, take time. If you, um, you know, you really want one of them fast, just target that rep with a contract. And of course, be sure to use your war table and maybe use the mobile app for um, just doing that more conveniently. Now, our final reputation mount is... Uh, Harder to get. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred reputations at Exalted. I'm not going to do a guide for that one, but thankfully, Wowhead do have excellent uh, reputation guides, and I recommend checking them out for more. Next up, we've got zone drops. These drop from any mob in the correct zone at a low drop chance, so you ideally want to um, just find an optimal farming location and shack up there. Overall, you can get the Dune Scavenger from Voldoon, the Terrified Pack Mule from Drustfar, and Golden Mane from Stormsong, and the Leaping Vein Seeker from Nazmir. Now look, for the most part, these are designed to be a random fun reward for players while they're leveling or doing world quests, but they are actually BOE. That means you can purchase them from the auction house. They're really expensive right now, but chances are these will just only get cheaper as time goes on. So I actually wouldn't really suggest prioritizing these guys just yet. Next, dungeons. Battle for Azeroth brings us three dungeon mounts. The mummified raptor skull comes from King's Rest. The Krog comes from Underroot and Shark Bait comes from Freehold. Now, these are on Mythic difficulty, and actually, if I'm is to believe, and I believe um, live that has been confirmed now, these mounts are actually available on the Mythic Plus loot table um, for these dungeons, so that's pretty great. Really, you just have to go and do as many rolls of the dice in these guys as you can. Then finally, the Obsidian Krolosk is for finishing the Glory of the War Torn Hero. This is the Battle for Azeroth meta dungeon achievement, and it will be perfectly doable for players in around 340 gear. You just go into the dungeons on Mythic, look at the achievements, and get to work. It's, um, yeah, it's not mega hard. Um, now, a few of them are a little bit challenging, so yeah, it's basically just doing some problem solving, putting in the time, but you will be able to go through it. A few of the achievements do require you to do multiple runs through dungeons, though, so do, um, you know, try to avoid pugging in these ones. Um, remember as well, if you mess up a mechanic, you do need to wipe and then just try again, and you should be able to get through it pretty easily. Next up, we've got mounts from raids. So, with a face that only a very strange mother could love, the Blood Forged Krog is from Glory of the Old Year Raider. Look, it shouldn't be too difficult in the long run and um, because it is doable on normal difficulty and um, in a few weeks time you can get um, you know maybe a group of heroic or high mythic plus geared and um, players together to do this and it should be fine and some of them do actually seem really fun the fetid devourer is one where everyone has to eat a terrible thrash so that'll be fun for the clothies and uh, gahoon has one where um, no movement is allowed while holding the power matrix orb which looks kind of fun to execute now there's nothing from gahoon mythic this time around and i imagine that they're holding the mythic mounts for the next tier, which would be in line with what they did for Legion's Emerald Nightmare. Next up, fishing. So the Great Sea Ray, which is a water-only mount and a recolor of the Darkmoon Skate, is fishable in the open waters around Zandalar and Kul Taras. Now the drop rates don't appear to be affected by your fishing skill or where you fish, and it seems to have went from a high drop rate at expansion launch to a smaller one now. Um, now if you want this, you kind of just have to fish for it for hours. Um, now, of course, if it's cheap in your server, then you can just pick it up in the AH, and those are prices that probably 
will go down as time goes on, so there's no pressure to get it right now. Next, we have islands. There are quite a few mounts from Island Expeditions. There's the Surf Jelly, which is a regal looking jellyfish. There's Squawks, which is a green parrot and a Donkey Kong Country reference. There's Kinsho's Eternal Hound, which is a recolored quillen, and the Twilight Avenger, which is another big purple dragon, and the M. Craghorn Chasm Leaper, which is another um, like recolored War Yeti guy. Now, the thing about these is that they, according to reports, basically they can drop on normal difficulty, they can be awarded on losses. It appears the Surf Jelly's only really been acquired now, but given how pets, toys, and transmog items, and just all the stuff from Island Expeditions seem to follow the same rules, they're just given out at random, so just do Island Expeditions whenever you can. These are not really intended to be collected in the space of a few afternoons, they just seem to be there for random rewards, and the randomness of these honestly is to the point where I wouldn't bother. Um, getting them is just a happy accident. Uh, player feedback in these has actually not been positive at all, and I would not be surprised if Blizzard tweaked this later on. Next, we've got Warfront. So the Arathi Highlands has a total of six mounts, two of which are faction specific. These are gotten by killing rares in the zone, and uh, each one of them seems to have a fairly reasonable drop chance. Of course, that makes sense because you can only loot these once per Warfront cycle. So um, yeah, really only once every few weeks. Now, Alliance can get the Highland Mustang from Doom Rider Helgrim, and the Horde can get the Broken Highland Mustang from Knight Captain Aldrin. Now, these will only appear when the appropriate faction controls the Warfront, so the Horde can uh, kill um, Aldrin while the Horde controls it and vice versa. Uh, players of either faction have access to the Swift Albino Raptor um, from Beast Rider Kama, which is an Albino Raptor. Uh, there's Skull Ripper, which is an unarmored and um, unsaddled Red Raptor, which oddly enough requires you to kill Skull Ripper herself. And then there's the Witherbark Diary which is a bat used by the forest trolls, and you can get that by killing um, Nimar the Slayer. And then finally, actually, there's the little donkey, which is a donkey that you can save from um, being eaten if you kill Overseer Kyrix and um, are lucky enough to have it drop. You'll also want to make um, clearing these just basically just be a part of what you do with every Warfront cycle, and that's kind of how you do it. Next, PvP, we've got the PvP content stuff, which follows a similar formula. Uh, if you get 50 plus Gladiator wins, so a rating of 2400 plus, then you'll get the Dread Gladiator's Proto Drake for Season 1, and there's other data mined mounts, but not for Season 1. Now, outside of the arena, the Conqueror Scythe Maw comes from Conqueror of Azeroth. This is a war mode achievement that um, involves you earning 1k honor in each zone, grabbing an airdrop, and um, hunting bounties, and uh, playing with a party. Now, the best way to do this is just to get a bunch of friends and go on the warpath. It shouldn't take you overly long to do if you play it smart, and it will actually be lots of fun. We then have, um, of course, new honor rewards. Now, the old Legion PvP levels were transferred into the new um, account-wide honor system. That means the progress is shared between your characters. Now, Blizzard have added the prestigious Blood Forged Corsair at honor level 500 which will take a fair bit of time to unlock, but yep, it's sitting there now as a thing that you can get. And then finally, we've got the Vicious Mounts. So these operate just as they did in the past, where you get a Vicious um, Saddle for completing enough arena or RBG content for a given season. You can use that saddle as a currency to purchase a Vicious Mount. And with this season, they have added the um, River Beast and Cleft Hoof. Next, we've got the Nashatar Blood Serpent. So this is a secret mount that Blizzard didn't really hide too well. Um, yeah, so the Nashatar Blood Serpent is a recolor of the Abyss Worm and the Riddler's Mind Worm. Now, to get this um, pretty sleek looking guy, you need to net yourself 20 Abyssal Fragments from the Auction House or from Random World Drops. You want to turn them into an abhorrent, um, abhorrent essence um, of the Abyss by using them at the Altar of the Abyss, which is behind the Waterfall in Stormsong at these coordinates. Then you want to go to Warfang Hold in Stormsong. Then then you want to summon the Adherent of the Abyss at the Abyssal Flame there, using your Abhorrent Essence, and then if you kill that, you'll get your mount. You'll probably want to do this with a handful of friends, because it's a rare elite and your item is consumed upon summoning. Um, now, only the summoner gets the mount, so all your friends will probably also want to run through this too, And but everyone gets the Aether of the Abyss. Now, this is an item that's theorized to be involved somehow in the world of WoW secret finding in a way that we do not currently know yet. Next, for the more unique mounts, the Horde can get Quaffon. This is a Pterodax, and to do this, you need to farm a exceedingly rare Pterodax egg from the Pterodaxes around Zandalar, and then you just want to start the very long process of training your own mount. It's very reminiscent to the Myths of Pandaria Cloud Serpent um, whole adventure thing, and it's named after a, um, you know, certain DreamWorks movie. Now, it takes a month of daily quests, um, caring for your little Pterodax as it grows up. Each stage has has different quests to do, and each stage ends with a small quest line to get to the next. Once they're all complete, you'll have Quaffon's harness, and uh, yep, yeah, you can use that. Right now, he can walk and run, but can't fly. 
That will probably be changed though once flying is enabled. Of course, I've just swapped over to Alliance, so um, I can't actually get this mount. Um, but hey, I doubt I'd get the luck to get the drop anyway. Next, engineering. So this is um, really kind of interesting. It's got a new mount, the Mecha Mogul Mark II. Now this is crafted first by gathering a whole ton of mats from salvaging mechs in Motherlode Mythic. Now to get those mats, you need 225 engineering. 150 is the cap, but that's where the crafted goggles come in because they'll boost you from 150 to 225. Next, a move that will make the Hearthstone players rather sad, you need to go and hand Dr. Boom 30k gold for an Azerite reactor. So once you've got everything else, then you want to use the probably patented Azerite Inspired Engineering Elixir, which is a drop for skilled engineers from trash in the Motherlode instance to boost your um, engineering to 250 and then smash in the face of the last boss. Once the last boss is down, you can dismantle his mech for the last piece and that'll be it. You can craft it. So yeah, enjoy your um, ugly sellotape together mech head thing. Next, let's cover the money mounts. So for the very wealthy, we've got the mighty Caravan Brontosaur. It costs 5 million gold. It's a big status symbol, of course. It's also a portable auction house though, which is really, really, really useful to have. So I'm sure this will be a pretty damn well-loved mount and a goal for a lot of players for expansions to come. Now, for a more reasonable amount of gold, you can get the Pale Hide Direnhorn. It's 500k for a dinosaur. That's a bit of a recolor, so it's not really worth it, to be honest. And yeah, so that's pretty much that. Now, when you're basically through all of this list, though, you might be a little bit closer to getting some of these next mounts. So the Biting Frost Shard core is from getting 350 mounts usable on one character. If you're intent on picking this up, chances are you don't need to watch this video. It's, uh, well, it's nice. It's an icy recolor of the Infernal mounts. It actually looks pretty good, um, though I guess being tied to the Legion aesthetics is kind of disappointing. Now, if you're truly mad, uh, you might want the Frenzied Fell Talon. That's 400 mounts. So yeah, good luck. Definitely a status symbol and you know what, pretty damn nice looking. Now an honorable mention does go to the Hive Mind. So this is kind of interesting. It was confirmed to be a placeholder in beta um, and this mount kicked off a lot of secret finding and discussion. I think we're almost guaranteed to see it return though. Um, although I'd be shocked if we got to use a like a Yogg-Saron brain multi-seated mount that goes faster with more people on it. It seems a bit crazy. And uh, yeah, there we have it there. Honestly, is not that much that's groundbreaking here. Um, I think it might be a bit of a letdown in comparison to some of the early Legion mounts. So hopefully patch 8.1 has, um, you know, more mounts like the B as an example, because there are some really cool mount models that just are not attainable yet, which is really the source of the disappointment. So I think we kind of just need to wait for flying to unlock and then that will, um, yeah, give us uh, probably a chance of getting some of the more unique mounts like uh, the Flying Bee that was on beta that everyone kind of loves. So there you go. That is the mounts of Battle for Azeroth and how you can get them. A lot of luck. St uh, based stuff, a lot of drops and things like that, which is kind of unfortunate, but there are a few things that you can target and just go out and get. So, hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.